Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is straight out of Boston. And today I'm back for episode number 18 of my Tampa Bay Rays out of the park baseball 18 series here. So we are back with the off season in the year 2020, just wrapping up the postseason. It was the Minnesota Twins who took home the World Series. They defeated the New York Mets in game number seven, a series that went all the way into November. And the Mets were only an 84 win team during the regular season. So, a pretty surprising champion. We were 20 games better than them. <laughs> that is always kind of frustrating uh, when stuff like that happens. But, it's alright. We lost to a pretty competitive Astros team in the playoffs in the first round. And, you know, obviously I'm not looking to blow up this team by any means or make major changes. We were a 104-win team, which is pretty good. We got a little bit unlucky in the playoffs, I would say. I think we lost to a team that's probably worse than us in Houston. But that stuff happens. The only thing you can do is just build the best team possible and give yourself the best possible chance to win. Um, so we're going to continue to try to do that. We certainly have places we think we could get, get better. Shortstop still. Um... So, and the other thing too is we just got to get healthier. You know, we had a lot of injuries. Hopefully our rotation will stay healthy this year. We won't lose guys like Daniel Norris. And, uh, you know, in the lineup, we were without Rowdy Tellez for the last few weeks of the regular season and the playoffs. And he has been a productive bat for us. So, not really much you can do about that. We also, we'll see about Osuna. He is going to be eligible uh, for free agency in a year. I'm not sure what kind of contract he's going to be looking at. I didn't like that his strikeouts were down at the beginning of the year, but he was still pitching really well, although it was only 10 innings. Looking at free agents, we've got Liam Hendricks and Chris Davis, both guys who filled their roles relatively well throughout the year. Oh, it looks like we also need to hire a new head scout. We got a new owner, Stuart Sternberg, has sold the team to Matt Linar, Milinar, I don't know. How do you say this guy's name? But, all right. Uh, that is cool. I can't say that's happened too often in the past. Here we go. Personnel leaving. So, we need a new trainer and a new scouting director. I remember we couldn't get Theo to resign in the middle of the year. So, let's do sign team staff. Ooh, a Terry Francona available as a manager. Indians finally got rid of him. That is kind of surprising. I guess he didn't make the playoffs. But, man, I know we already have a good manager in Butterfield. Hiring Francona would be... A pretty power move. Let's look at scout ratings. Doesn't have to be preferred occupation, but um, all right. So obviously Theo is really good at everything. That's who we would want ideally, but we're not gonna be able to get him. This guy from Korea probably wouldn't come over anyway. Ken Howell seems pretty solid. Colt Morton also. Uh, the question is, do we care more about international or amateurs? Honestly, international has been pretty bad as of late. Uh, according to Theo, we haven't gotten a lot of guys out of the international. So let's go Colt Morton. Scouting director, three years. And then I forget who our assistant GM is. Usually I like to keep a guy as assistant GM who could fill in the pinch as scouting director in case I just can't find a good scouting director when a guy like Theo doesn't want to come back. So, personnel, and I, also, I just don't remember. It's Matthew Silverman, so not really. I don't think his scout ratings would be very good. We also need a new trainer. So, if you guys have been watching the series, you know I like to go with guys who are better at prevention than healing, necessarily. And this guy looks like a beast with prevention. I don't know if he would come over. No, he doesn't want to work in a foreign league. This guy also looks good, Stan Conti. So, let's get him five years. He will probably retire during that because he's 61, but it's all right. Um, this guy also would have been good, Ken Crunch. All right, so I waited a little while till I got a new head scout to sign on, and I actually offered two guys contracts. I don't know how this is going to work. So I obviously offered this Colt Morton guy contract, and then I offered someone else a contract that I think he might take. So I'm kind of thinking about moving Morton to assistant GM and just firing Matthew Silverman, even though I know Silverman plays a big part with the Rays in real life, but uh, in this game, he's just the assistant GM. He doesn't really do anything, and I already mentioned I like to have a good scout as the assistant GM just in case. Uh, let's go front office personnel. Silverman, only 44. His contract only runs through two more years. He doesn't make, well, he makes a reasonable amount, um, but I wouldn't really, I don't know. Where else could I put this Stan Conti guy? I don't really want to make him, or this Cold Morning guy. I don't want to make him the bench coach. Well, whatever. If the other guy signs on, I guess uh, we'll just fire Morton and eat the money on that. Um, I haven't looked at any of the awards yet. So Chris Sale was second in MVP voting and lost to Mike Trout. That's too bad. Trout was 9.4 war. 
sale was 7.3 to lead all pitchers. I guess that bold number means only lead pitchers. I don't know what the bold numbers mean. I think it's lead leader, lead league lead league leaders, but honestly, I can't figure it out. Um, AL skipper of the year, not us. Cy Young, I'm assuming sale one. Who is it? Oh yeah. Chris Sale, second straight Cy Young for him in a Tampa Bay uniform. Rookie of the year, Luis Rojas was third. Despaigne was first. He had a good year for New York. I thought about signing him. Silver Sluggers, nothing going there. Reliever of the year, Gustav Morin was second. And Gold Gloves, nothing going there. So the only guy with an option who we have to decide on this year is Anthony Rizzo, and I already shopped him around a little bit. I Pretty much the only good offers I was getting for Rizzo were like really good relievers. And, you know, Rizzo last year, he had a pretty good offensive year, didn't play a ton, only 116 starts, was still a 3-1 player. And I like where his ratings are at for the most part, Iron Man, so he's going to play every day. Uh, if we ask him to. So I think I'm just going to pick up the option. And then, you know, hopefully next year, if he has a good year, we can get the qualifying offer on him and, you know, get compensation back. That would be ideal at this point because I don't think he's going to get traded. If I don't trade him now, I don't think it'll make sense to trade him in the middle of the year. It might um, if we have too many first basemen or corner guys like we've had in the past. But uh, let's go to salary arbitration. So only guys who are free agents or pending free agents are Liam Hendricks and Chris Davis, both of whom fit their roles nicely last year. Uh, didn't you know Davis didn't play a ton, but he still hit for 12 home runs in you know 198 at bats. And Liam Hendricks was a 408 ERA. He was better at the beginning of the year. Both of these guys probably you know looking for short money, but we don't have a lot of money as it is to expend this off season. So. I don't really uh, think we're going to need to bring these guys back. They were nice complimentary pieces, but certainly replaceable. So we have guys we do need to bring back who are not making the minimum anymore, such as Josh Bell. And this is where our I think our budget probably is up from a little bit last year, but it's not. It's likely not going to be by much. And like these are two guys right off the bat who were minimum salary players last year who are going to make a combined $11 million in Bowers and Bell, but they're two big pieces of our team. I mean, that's that was 10 war last year on our team, so we obviously have to keep them. Uh, Mike Morin, slight pay increase for him. He was, you know, one of the best relievers in baseball last year, so we obviously want to bring him back. An extension for him would be nice, but um, I don't know. Honestly, he could be like a trade candidate just from the sense that if we could get a more cost-controllable reliever, I would consider doing a deal like that. Would he do something like this? Yeah, he doesn't really want to. So let's just offer him the seven million. He's a free agent next year. I might shop him around and just see if we can. We probably wouldn't get anyone too good for him, but we could get another good reliever, potentially. Rivero, one of our best lefties out of the pen. He still has two years of team control left for two point six million this year. So we'll bring him back. Osuna is the big question mark coming off of the injury. Twelve million. I'm definitely going to shop him around before committing to the twelve million that it would take to get him back. Buck Farmer proved to be good pitching depth for us last year. I see no harm in bringing him back for eight hundred thousand. And, you know, he'll probably be a minor league player for us at the beginning of the year again because we can definitely get him through waivers. Colome is another interesting case, $10 million. These definitely seems like the relievers are where we could shed some salary. He is a free agent next year, so he definitely feels like a guy I would want to trade. Coming off of a solid season and a better, a better bounce-back season of sorts after he kind of struggled, although the war was lower. But, I don't know, he's always kind of been an interesting player. Blake Snell, another guy who no longer makes the minimum that we need to bring back, 4.6 for this year. And he is a guy that I would consider giving an extension to at this point. Uh, try to getting try to get out ahead of that because long term, I'm not going to want to pay what he's... If his arc continues the way it is right now, I'm probably not going to want to pay what he wants on the open market. But if I get to him now and I offered him a deal like this, where these last two years where team options this would be super team friendly... We'll see a lot of downside in a contract like that. He doesn't looking for a little bit more than that. So this is the kind of contract he would do: fourteen million in those two option years, and eleven million in that third year. So we have to look at Snell and consider, you know, do we think he? It's safe to say he's going to be an eleven million dollar a year pitcher for us in that third year. He's twenty seven right now, 
And I just like the fact that his control is up to 55 now, and he still has that good movement and good stuff. I think he'll be able to control the walks. I mean, you look at basically the difference. His strikeouts were up, but also like the walks were way down. And I think that was the big difference this year, what made him such a better pitcher. So we're going to offer Snell this extension. Uh, that's super team-friendly as it is. I don't think we need to bicker over that third year. Norris is a guy that I'm not ready to offer an extension to, even though he pitched well uh, down the stretch, for, or not down the stretch, but before he got hurt. He made 13 very good starts for us, 2A2 ERA. Two years left before he's a free agent, and you see he's looking for that kind of extension. Uh, but I would rather just pay him year by year at this point. He hasn't really proven anything to me. He's a guy that I would always uh, shop around. I would be taking offers for him. You know, same thing with Carlos Martinez. I mean... Those are solid three and four options, but you, I don't know. They both are kind of pricey for us. Martinez obviously doesn't. Uh, we have the 50% salary retention from the Cardinals, so that's not too bad for us. But he wasn't that great down the stretch. I mean, he really struggled after looking good in his first five or six starts. He struggled mightily after that. But I think the main thing is shuffling the relievers if you want to free up money. All right, so here's a good trade I found right off the bat with the Austin Orcas. They had offered me Giancarlo Stanton for Alex Colome. Stanton, you know, obviously still in that big contract, and that contract has always been kind of not that great. I mean, he just has to hit a super, super ton to be a productive player, to be a truly elite player. And, you know, he's just kind of inconsistent. He's had a good year this year in real life, but in the game he's 31 now. Skills are starting to diminish, and he was only a 3.4 win player last year for, you know, 29 million would be what he's making next year to be locked in for the next what is that six more seasons that is just such an insane contract um so i don't want to do that instead we are looking at one of their top young arms aj puke 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 whatever who was obviously the i think he was the sixth pick in the draft last year to the a's who've you know now moved to austin and he's looking kind of like a Blake Snell type. Not great control right now, but some good pitches, good stuff. Uh, two good pitches, at least, in the fastball and the slider still working on the changeup. Um, could be effective out of the bullpen for us this year. Could be a starter, you know, to use for depth. Alex Faido, Fado, I'd have to learn how to pronounce this guy's name. He was the seventh pick. He went to the uh, Tigers, I think it was. Tigers and the Marlins, I don't remember, in uh, the draft a couple days ago. But he was a solid reliever for Austin last year. Could eventually develop into a starter. But honestly, I might be content to leave him as a reliever. And it doesn't take much more. The original deal was Colome and Cal Conley for Puke. Puke, I have to, literally have to learn how to pronounce both these guys' names. Uh, and then I just threw in Kelly and Swift for Fajardo. And here's Cal Conley. He's listed as one of our top prospects, but he obviously just is not going to be good enough for the bad. Good defender, but... He's not a major league bat. He will never be a major league bat. It doesn't look like to me. So we're going to do this trade uh, unless there are any other relievers that I'd want to get thrown in, but I don't think so. All right, so complete trade. So we clear some money with that because we took back two minimum salary players and we got rid of Colome. The question still is whether or not we want to give Osuna the money. There's also one guy I just completely glanced over in arbitration is Joe Biagini who is scheduled to make $1.2 million this year. I think we'll probably want him back at that price. You can see we've only got $7 million for an extension. Now, that number will go up a little bit once we get the free agency, so we can give Biagini the $1.2 million. I'm not going to trade more in. I still don't know what to do about Osuna. I think I might non-tender him and then see what his market is because he probably won't get $12 million on the open market coming off of injury. So let's do that. I think that sounds like a better idea to me than just giving him the $12.5 million that he would want. So we are at the beginning of free agency, looking at the international free agents as always. And nothing good this year, so we have to rely on the Major League free agents. We could also look at posted players, which I seem to always just forget about, but sometimes can be productive. Usually you're not going to get great deals, but the posted players is the thing. But you know, sometimes you can find worthy contracts. And no one really good this year, yeah. This guy would be decent potential, but doesn't even have starter stamina, so he would be a bullpen by bullpen guy exclusively. So looking at the Major League free agents, I don't know why I have this guy marked, Zach Epp, but he is like a... What, who the hell is this guy? He's like a minor league free agent that's just popping out of nowhere and looking like a good third baseman at that. I don't, who, I don't know who this is or like what this is. I, I don't know... 
he's just a five star player that is appearing out of nowhere. So that makes sense. Um, we might make a run at him. So now we've got twenty two million for free agents, and I was looking at our infield. Ibanez's skills. I don't know if this is because of our new scouting director or it seems like his skills have just diminished. So I don't really think he might not be suitable. I mean, getting Ep in here would be nice. We would have Ibanez. I mean, we would have Ramirez and Ep. And maybe we could use Ramirez at shortstop like we've been talking about to play Ibanez sometimes over Urena. Shortstop is still the, the spot that we just don't have... A really good player. We have like basically a replacement level player in Urena. He's probably better than replacement level, but not by a ton, I would say. Another sort of interesting guy, Garrett Cole. I think we have too much pitching now to really be going after pitchers, but um, Garrett Cole coming off of an injury, he was a productive player for Pittsburgh the last couple of years. 4.6, 5.4, 5.2 war. So you like to see that. That was consistency before he got hurt. Obviously coming off of an injury, who knows. I saw Usuna's demands were lower already, so I think that was the right move. Letting him get the free agency. Other free agents, Nolan Arenado looking for south of twenty million. Ooh. This this could be this is like paying for more than Zach Epp, but it's also probably the you know, the more solid player. They're both good defenders. That's the thing I really like about Epp is he's a seventy five grade third baseman. And he would be the better value play per se over Arenado, but I don't know if this is just our scouts like fooling us. It's just like so weird. I don't know who this is. I don't I've never seen anything like this. Player just generated out of nowhere. He has like no statistics. Um Arenado is really good. He probably is looking for a longer contract too, is the thing. But he could be an option. I almost wonder if Epp could play a little bit of shortstop. He is... How big is he? Is that going to tell me? Oh, six foot two. Um, he seems like he could play a little bit of shortstop. Maybe. Um, <laughs> Arenado, I definitely don't think could. Where's Arenado? Yeah, his turn DP is way too low. But... Epps, Epps was not bad. I feel like, oh, if he could play shortstop, that would be sweet. Because other than that, I'm not really seeing anyone too worthy of me going after. And All right, we're going to do it. Epp, he's looking for $22 million. All right, so never mind. I'm not going to pay him that. I don't have the money to pay him that. Arenado is still at 18. So we could still get him to play third base. I'm going to get in and give him like 17 and do... Like five years with the team option. Use for all. Yeah, yeah, he wants more than that. So this is too bad. I don't really know. I have to look at other other ways to spend our money potentially. Here's an interesting option for shortstop next year. Gene Segura, who is still a four star player, only looking for less than five million. Our scouts don't love him as a hitter, and he hasn't been that great of a player the last couple of years, but his ratings are, are pretty decent still. I feel like he could be a good option at shortstop, especially over uh, Richard Urena. We would have two options at the very least. We could even do a little platoon there if Urena wanted to hit against the righties. But uh, Segura, I think it you know still provide a pretty good average for us. So let's offer him one year, 4.5 with a team option for next year. So another guy th I'm thinking about moving is Lewis Brinson. And even if I just bring in a backup for him, for him, he is someone that the manager will start every day in left field if I don't move him just because his def defense in left field is so good. But I would rather have a more productive bat there because I don't really think Brinson is going to be too good of a hitter at the major league level. So I'm thinking about Enrique Hernandez. I also saw, of course, uh, that guy I just looked at from Philly. There's also, not Tyler Anderson, but who's the other guy from Detroit? Tyler Alexander, young lefty with 80 control. I've had him in a OOTP save before, and he was so good because he had that nasty control. Man, I kind of want to do, like, part of me wants to do that trade just because, I don't know, because of Tyler Anderson. I've had him in the past. I've, I have a history with him. Um, let's see if we can get both players. Probably not. Maybe if we offer in something else. We could definitely give up Ryan Yarbrough. All right, so we'll do that trade then. Lewis Brinson and Ryan Yarbrough, Yarbrough, whatever. Can we get a good, another good reliever out of it? Ooh, this guy. What do you want for that guy? 
Okay, you want a little too much for that guy. Birdie. Eh, I don't want to give him up. Um, could I get... Eh, I'd rather have Tyler Alexander than that guy, to be honest. I just want, I want him to work so bad. Uh, Funkhauser. Looks like he'll be a good starter. All right, so let's do this trade. Chopping around some of my pitchers, Christian Yellick came up in an offer for Daniel Norris. I don't think I'm going to do that deal, but some good offers nonetheless. Jerks and Profar. Mookie Betts was offered to me, but he's kind of on the decline. I, he typically declines after a couple of years in this game and sort of settles into being exactly what he's been, which is not that great of a hitter, but a uh, guy who does a bunch of things decently well. So Christian Yellick was really the most intriguing offer, but he doesn't provide a ton of defensive value, and he gets on base a lot, but you can see he had that one good six-win year like literally two years ago. I could see him being you know, pretty good for us. He's going to make $14 million and then have a team option for $15 million. He would almost slot in nicely for Anthony Rizzo if we could move Rizzo in a separate deal. So the Rizzo offers have really not gotten that much better. Pretty much, you know, the only good players like John Carlos Stanton or, you know, other than that are pretty much just relievers like Andrew Miller. Miller, he's obviously really, really good, though. I mean, that would be kind of the perfect one-year ad. The question is, would you trade Daniel Norris for Andrew Miller and then Rizzo for Yelich in the same deal? I mean, I think Rizzo for Yelich is pretty much an even swap, especially when you consider Yelich has one extra year of team control. Miller, he the thing that scares me is that he's fragile. He does get hurt. He's been healthy the last few years, and he's been really, really good. So I think I'm going to hold off on doing either of those deals right now. It just feels like not the right time to do a big trade like that, or a big couple of trades. All right, so Segura looking for more money now. And he's all right, getting towards kind of the $6 million range. I'd still be fine paying him this, but... Let's, we could even make this a vesting option if he wants for, you know, let's say 450 plate appearances. I think that's pretty fair. If he's getting 450 plate appearances, that means he's playing a good majority of the season. And we get more depth options. I mean, honestly, I really like this team's depth at this point, which is good. I feel like we're, we're going to be pretty safe if we get injured again, um, especially if he adds Segura. Then we'll have lots of depth on the infield. Ibanez. Rodriguez, we still have Trace Thompson, uh, Ramiro Rodriguez, we got in a trade last year. I'm not really sure would be that great of a player, but Trevino, good depth. And then our pitching depth, I'm really encouraged by. We have five starters. That doesn't include Puke, Alexander, Jacob Faria, Buck Farmer, and Jose De Leon. De Leon coming off of surgery, so it's tough to account for a guy coming off of surgery. Arenado signs with the Dodgers. He, wow, did not sign for that much. So the Dodgers get another good player. See if Zach Epps signed yet, just out of curiosity. I'm sure he did. Epps has not signed. He's now looking for about $25 million. So definitely still well without of my price range.